Hello and welcome to today's webinar topic on Expedite Your Merger and Acquisition, Integrate Your Identity Infrastructure with Radiant One Federated Identity. My name is Kim Locke, I'm with Radiant Logic, and I'll be your moderator for today's program. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that your lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the question portal and we'll have a Q&A session at the end if time allows. If we are not able to get to your question during the webcast, we'll send a personal email to follow up. Also, this webcast will be recorded and sent out, along with a copy of the presentation slides, within the next 24 hours. Our speakers today are Jason Pratt, Identity and Access Engineer with Baylor, Scott & White. Jason has been working in IT for over 10 years in a range of fields, including finance, government, and healthcare. Jason specializes in privilege access management, identity security, active directory, and MFA SSO. And Wade Ellery, Senior Solutions Architect at Radiant Logic. Wade has extensive experience in enterprise IT direct and channel software and services sales and management. He has in-depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IGA, risk and compliance, and IT security challenges. We'll start with you, Jason. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Jason Pratt, and I am the Identity and Access Engineer for Baylor Scott and & White. And we are actually going to talk today about our um, acquisition of Scott & White several years ago, and the not only the challenges that Baylor faced, but um, also the solution that ended up actually, as you guys will see, saved us uh, over $100 million, um, the, the, including um, you know cost savings in productivity, um, user staff, and hardware. Um, and that was all done, uh, made possible by Radiant Logic um, and help simplify that, that merger and acquisition until we could actually consolidate our forests into a single one. Um, so that's is what we're gonna show today. Maybe one. There we go. Um, sorry about that. So when when Baylor Health acquired Scott and White Health Plan, there were major technical challenges. Um, Scott and White, both Baylor and Scott and White had legacy, legacy um, patient health systems, finance systems, and security systems that did not allow for multiple data stores or LDAP connections. So it made integrating users into each system almost impossible. Um, our MFA SSO solution also did not, work, did not work with multiple directories. We would actually have to rebuild an entire second MFA system um, just for Scott and White, which would have been extremely costly. costly. It would have doubled our infrastructure for, the, for that system, as long as double, doubling our license fees. Um, the traditional solution of assigning the workforce multiple accounts and passwords also wasn't practical because the doctors and nurses were not going to use two different accounts to access two different systems. Um, it's just, it's not practical. They're busy and they have a hard enough time remembering things, let alone introducing, you know, Dr. X needs to now have two accounts with two different passwords. It's, it would impact patient care. And it was, it was a very big issue for us. The initial analysis between the Baylor, Baylor and Scott White merger um, estimated that in order to duplicate all of our applications that did not allow multiple data stores would have cost over $100 million in infrastructure and licensing costs um, and thousands of hours of manpower. And it would take years, um, which would mean the, the, merger, um, the merger would not have been as profitable because I mean, you're gonna spend years before you can take advantage of each other's systems. And it was tasked with the IT staff to come up with a better solution, whether even a full force migration would have taken years. So we were kind of, people were, people were stumped and that's actually when Radiant Logic came into the play. Um, some of the, some of the, some of the, like I said before, some of the major challenges were a loss of revenue. Um, for every doctor that can't get into our system, you know, you're talking about $7,500 a day, um, extremely high capex and operation costs, as well as um, man, manpower issues. 
um, even if even if we had that money, or even if we had the, the money, the, we Baylor lacked the resources to actually implement those in a timely manner. They would have had to hire new people as well, and it would have limited our security posture because we wouldn't be able to MFA SSO all these operations either. So um, we ended up using Radiant Logic, and as you guys can see, you know, we had we had multiple data stores. We had Active Directory. We had a dedicated uh, ADLDS instance. We actually had um, Oracle database acting as a, a directory for one application. We also had a couple of SQL servers, um, SQL databases that were acting as a, as, a, as a data source. And all those are incompatible with traditional, with traditional applications. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to register, they're not going to recognize it. So using Radiant Logic, we were actually, um, we were actually able to not only integrate two separate forests and treat it as one identity, we were actually also able to take those Oracle databases and SQL databases and transform all those attributes and all those users into, into essentially an, an, an LDAP user, which would allow all of, our, all of our applications, all of our security tools, our MFA solution, we're able to use all these, use all these identities as a, a single LDAP store. Um, we, when, when we rolled this out, we used one, one Radiant Logic view to house, I believe, eight different data stores. And it presented everything as, as one single source of record. So that being said, a, a process that was going to end up taking, um, taking years and, you know, millions and millions of dollars to unfragment the identities, um, get out of data, get out of um, proprietary proprietary systems that just cost a lot of money. Um, we did it in weeks, which for any merger, for pretty much any merger and acquisition is is crazy easy. So so about I want to say about a month after we merged with Baylor Stock and White or with Stock and White, we were actually able to present our single unified directory to all the systems. So the doctors in Scott and White can now access patient records in Baylor and vice versa. Um, there is no, there was no impact to the doctors. There's no impact to our patients. Um, we were able to, we were, we were able to deliver an incredible value add because of this. Um, not only that, but we were, we were able to better audit our systems. We had a single source of record for audit auditability. Um, our metadata stayed. Our metadata was was um, was standardized across the board. We were able to present the same attributes to a hundred different systems because we were able to virtually map map those those data points. And it didn't, like I said, it didn't matter whether they came from Oracle. It didn't matter what Oracle called called username or called group membership. We we could we could leverage Radiant Logic to overcome those, those limitations in some programs and present them how we needed it to. Um, new users now, uh, you know, now that our, our merger and acquisition is done, um, even before that, we saw a huge increase in productivity outside of the mer outside of merger activities. Um, new users being brought on board. You know, it didn't matter where they were built, they, they, they were just there for any system to take advantage of. We were able to consolidate our patient record system um, into a single point as well post merger. All of these tools are made, were made possible by Radiant Logic, um, and it allowed us to further to not only just grow um, pre merger, but also post um, post migration. So when we were able to take all that knowledge in, into effect, and you know we were able to see we we're able to do this. Um, it didn't put on hold any projects during during this merger. We actually moved full steam ahead with new technologies, uh, upgrades, and all all with a seam, pretty much a seamless uh, a, a seamless experience. And it's it's an experience that we would never have gotten without um, without Radiant Logic. It would have, like I said, it would have been. It would have been very, very difficult to to do any of these to do any of these scenarios um, for such a major organization. Um, I'm sure anyone on this call that's gone through a merger 
has has experienced not just user pain but you know application pain things like that um, you know again um, our desired outcomes after this after all of this were a zero trust framework which we can now actually achieve and I'll explain that in a minute um, our user experience was enhanced because users don't need multiple credentials um, systems don't need multiple data sources it makes it, it made for our our troubleshooting and our just our core technology space to be a, a more a much more simpler operation so you know we could we could get rid of we could not worry about integrating our oracle database which is um, something a little bit different than what a lot of people do and you know it, it allowed us to be more secure and that's one of the definite de definite um, benefits of radiant logics products is it's not just a merger and acquisition tool anymore it is a security enabler uh, we were a we are able to now hide our our data stores from third parties and only present data that we need that they need um, you know we have i want to say about 150 SaaS applications now all pre radiant logic would be hooking back into our active directory and pulling all the user data, all the attributes, um, very, it would be very hard to limit it. And with Radiant Logic, you know, we now have 80, 80 something different views. And every view is ta tailor made for a new SaaS application or a new, uh, new application, even on prem. Um, our, our health systems only need five or six attributes for an employee. So why bombard them with 318 Active Directory attributes? Um, we actually hide. So, you know, we actually go through and hide the attributes that aren't needed. We hide the OUs that certain, that certain applications aren't going to need to help increase performance and also reduce our, our Active Directory um, data loads. Because, you know, some of those, some of those LDAP queries are pretty intensive and can, and can bring a domain controller to, to its knees. And with Radiant Logic, we we're actually able to avoid that as well because if our EHR system only needs one OU, why, why give it access to why give it access to a hundred? Um, if it only needs two or three OUs, you know you can get you can get that granular now. And Radiant Logic has really made that a uh, a very important aspect of our business for for security now. Um, and you know we recently, you know we recently actually just completed our migration or our forest migration a year ago. Um, so this merge, we were using this technology for about five years pre-merger with actually without actually any issues um, and the only reason we merged was um, just because of one of our EHR systems wanted us to do it so they did it but we operated five years post-merger with a total of 14 different data sources um, actually with almost no no issue um, I can say for our experience we had we were probably averaging um, eight nines of uptime in our in our high availability clusters for five years. Um, I want to say we had you know the, this system not only allowed us to do it, but allowed to do us safely and practical. I think we had a total of three or four outages that might have been traced back to our radiant logic system in five years. So it's definitely a very very important tool, and it. It opens up the doorway for so much more than a merger and acquisition nowadays. Um, it, it, it's a tool that could be used for any major enterprises, security operations, um, you know, data, data uh, privacy, data minimization, things like that as well, um, are all things that this product will help your enterprise with and make it easier. Um, Sorry, muted myself. Um, but yeah, I mean that that was our that that was our our migration journey in in a nutshell. Um, and, and and the most thing I can take away from people is we were a merger from a technical 
technology aspect was complete in, in 30 days um, because of the multiple views and be able to consolidate multiple data sources. Um, and that right there, that right there is, is a remarkable piece of technology in anyone's, should be a remarkable piece of technology in anybody's, uh, in anybody's eyes. Uh, being able to do such massive turnarounds with minimal effort. Um, Okay, great, Jason. Does that conclude your your part of the I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, presentation? Yes, it does. Okay, great. Thank you so much. We'll uh, we'll, we'll uh, let Wade take over. All right. Let's see. Whoops. Are you seeing my slide? Because it's not telling me what screen I'm sharing, unfortunately. I am seeing a guy, somebody swimming. See your desktop. There you go. That, yeah, that, uh, that would where I'd like to be today, but I'm now you should see the uh, the blue banner, everyone. Yes. Okay, excellent. Yeah. It, uh, all the different video conferencing solutions, everyone does things differently. So, first of all, Jason, thank you very much for that presentation. Um, there are so many uh, little nuggets of gold in, in what you covered and the areas you, you touched on. Uh, I'm going to try and refer back to those as much as possible. Um, but I encourage everyone when you get the, uh, the recording and the slides uh, at the end of this webinar, review Jason's presentation again, because there's a number of things that he, he pointed to that uh, the fact that they actually operated for a number of years in a virtually merged world where both companies were operating as a single entity, but they hadn't physically consolidated anything because that wasn't necessary for functionality. The total cost savings that they had uh, put into place. To Excuse me, the sorry, Wade. I, I hate to interrupt you, but um, we're getting some feedback that we can't see your screen. We're wondering if it's a delay, or I, I can see your screen, but um, others who are viewing it as guests are not seeing your screen. Okay. Uh, I think. Uh, Possibly what people will need to do is to refresh their screen. That seems to work. Okay. So the recommendation yeah. is um, if anybody's having an issue with seeing uh, the uh, presentation screen to, to hit the refresh button. And thank you everyone for your patience. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> We were preparing for a power outage today because we're supposed to have severe weather here in California. So if the worst I have is my uh, my screen is a little laggy, um, we're ahead of the curve right now. So that's a good thing. Um, is, are we getting feedback that it's visible now? Let yes, me, thank you. I just moved a slide forward to see if that, again, how long it takes that to, to move for other folks if that's happening in real time. And um, I will I will endeavor to uh, move the slide before I, I start talking about that particular slide too much, so the system has time to catch up. But again, in going back to Jason's presentation, there's just so much in there in terms of the capabilities of Radiant Logic to uh, allow them to do things in weeks that used to take months or years. And we hear this over and over again from our customers uh, in the merger and acquisition uh, scenario, but also in the regular operations of your uh, environment, the ability to bring all this information to one place, make it available regardless of how it was sourced and uh, have that be in exactly the view, the format, the subset of users and attributes that you wanna share with the applications. Those are all critical benefits of Radiant Logic. And uh, we encourage you to, engage in a conversation with your uh, salesperson and your solutions architect to dig deeper into all the things that Radiant Logic can do because there's a, a Swiss army knife of capabilities here and we want to make sure that if you've got a need and we can help you with it that you're aware of, of how Radiant Logic will play in that scenario. So today we're going to focus on mergers and acquisitions and really the challenges that, that brings to uh, an, an IEM and, and an IDM uh, scenario where you're trying to bring two companies together, not just to merge customers and 
and do more business and have more sales, but you're also merging infrastructures. You're merging an, an identity management and identity platform um, together from two organizations, and that inherently has challenges. Um, and you've got users coming in from the old company, the new company, um, they're all trying to get access to the right resources. There's a whole new set of individuals that need to be understood in terms of the context that they play in the organization, how you're gonna meld them into the, the new organization. And anytime you're doing a merger, a recognition that one, one company may have a higher security posture than the other. So it may not be really prudent to simply throw open the, the front door when you get the first uh, uh, IT uh, connection between networks and just set up some AD trusts and let everybody roam around freely inside the, the new uh, merged environment. There's a lot of considerations about um, uh, IP and uh, property within the organization and protecting assets and resources and making sure that your privilege account management systems are fully engaged and everything's in place before you literally let people um, work together seamlessly. So Radiant Logic can help quite a bit in that and we can help you um, cut down on the doubling of your identity infrastructure. Um, as Jason mentioned, uh, the challenges a lot of times are that I have multiple platforms that are doing the same things during a merger. And eventually I want to get to a consolidation. I want that synergy of a single solution doing my uh, authentication authorization, multi-factor authentication. Um, but may, that may not be easy for that application to understand and talk to multiple distributed backend platforms. So we can help you address that also. And then there's all the specific access requirements across two organizations that you need to make sure. And, and a simple example is a sales group in one organization may be folks that are actually doing outside sales and are generating leads and a sales group in another organization may be more based around marketing and generating opportunities and getting imaging out there and social awareness putting those two groups together and merging them together as a single function is really not the intent of either group you have to understand um, how to bring things together and also how to potentially separate things and, and put them into new contexts so again, with Radiant Logic, one of the key values here, and Jason touched on this, is the granularity. The ability to, to be able to operate in views of the data that are tailored to the requirements of the scenario, requirements of the application, without necessarily opening up all, everything and exposing everything you have, or confusing the application with far more information or overlapping identities, or other challenges that really break a lot of infrastructure. With Radiant Logic, you can make sure that everything is smooth and easy and well understood by the applications, understood by the business, uh, speeds the onboarding process, makes everything easier and, and much more effective. So one of the challenges with, with M&A, and, and we talk to customers and prospects regularly, and a lot of times we'll ask the question, you know, has your company gone through any mergers and acquisitions? Because this, again, is a primary area we can be of assistance. And they'll say, yeah, we merged with the company three years ago. We still have pieces of their AD uh, domain infrastructure hanging off our network because legacy applications dependent on that old domain infrastructure can't be sunset yet after three years and we're still supporting really two environments we've never been able to consolidate. That drives cost, that drives expensive overhead. The idea of an M&A is if I take one company and a second company and I put them together, the operating expenses of those two companies go down. It's not the one plus one equals two, it's one plus one equals 1 1.5. And by reducing overall cost, I increase revenue, I increase value to the organization. That's the reason for merging or one of them. Um, but when you add cost to that process and you make that actually more expensive to merge these companies together than the value you're realizing from consolidation, you have a challenge in that model. And then if it takes too long, that over uh, overall expense grows and grows over time. You can absorb a bump in, in overall overhead in a, a three-month period, maybe a six-month period, but if it's a three-year model where you're you're really supporting two infrastructures that time period, you've got a lot of, uh, of additional cost you had to consider, and that comes from really delaying the integration of these environments. And what you end up doing to solve these problems is you bring in programmers, you bring in coders, you write scripts, you you do brittle one-off workarounds for these challenges just to get things done. 
But if anything changes, if another merger comes along, if somebody uh, wants to do things differently, if you didn't understand the specification of how you were gonna bring that together in hard code, you have to go back and recode everything. You have to go back and, and change it again. And you may not even have the person who wrote the original integration scripts around to tell you what he did and how he you know, assumed the world worked. So the challenges become, again, more expensive. They take longer. And then you end up with this model where I've got orphaned applications still hanging off my network on an old uh, branch of an AD forest I don't want anymore because I just can't get there from here. There's just too much challenge to this model of doing all this work. So what does Radiant Logic do to solve that problem? How do we make a difference? And, and Jason pointed to this uh, several times in his presentation in terms of the impact that they saw, that when you bring Radiant Logic in, and we'll show you a little bit later, actually on an on a architectural level, what Radiant Logic is doing to make all this happen, but we're gonna speed the integration. We're gonna let people from company A appear to be employees of company B to company B applications, so they can immediately start to get to work on company B applications as if they were part of company A and already been merged and moved over. And vice versa, company B folks can start working on company A. Company A can see into company B and do their security audits and do all of their attestation and account access review and put their public account management platform in place. They can operate in that organization as if it was their own without having to have moved everything at that point. And then we allow you to modernize and migrate old directory infrastructures and old platforms and old static models you had for the way you managed identity into a new modern scenario. As Jason pointed out, they built a single source of identity, a master user record or an entitlement catalog or any of the names you're hearing out there for the consolidation of your identity information to one place, one source of truth, fed by all the different sources of truth like HR platforms and other places, your IGA system, but that one place for everybody to go to get what they need. It's like the, the Walmart of identity. Everything you need is in there from a fishing pole to a, a banana and your applications can get everything they need in one place. This tremendously simplifies the environment. And we do this by decoupling the applications from the identity infrastructure. And this is critical. You'll see it in the diagrams in a second. This is the magic sauce. This is the capability of being able to model a world virtually that doesn't exist in the physical world because we disconnect that physical world from all the sources of identity from the applications that are consuming it and allow you a tremendous amount of power in that scenario where you can remodel your information, you can reduce the information you're exposing, you can reduce complexity and overhead, you can sunset old platforms as you need to. And while you're doing this, as, as Jason mentioned, you're increasing reliability, scalability, and availability. Your access to identity data goes up. Your systems run faster and more efficiently. We literally make everything else in your IT infrastructure run better. So what are the steps for doing this typically? And there's a number of steps in a process of merging two identity organizations together. The first thing, as Jason mentioned it, you want to build that union. A union is a place where you've brought in all of your identities from all of your sources and you put them in a single list of users. Every user is in the list once. Even if they have accounts in multiple platforms, I have them once on the union because that's their identity that I'm linking. That's their primary, excuse me, primary profile. Now this requires understanding identity overlap, understanding that the same identifier, J Smith and two systems may be different people. The J Smith in one system and J12794 in another platform is the same person. So I have to be able to have tools, and we do have those in Radiant Logic. They're mouse and wizard driven, that give you the ability to really quickly and easily aggregate this information, understand overlapping accounts, understand synchronization of identity data, and, and build that union, that single flat list of all of your users across all of your platforms. I don't write code. I haven't done it since I punched Fortran cards back in college. Tells you how old I am. Um, but I can configure a very large and complex uh, aggregation of information or of identity data in Radiant Logic with simply using a mouse and the wizard tools that we have. It's that mature product. We've been at this for 20 years. And the CIO, CEO's philosophy is that the product functionality out of the box should solve our customers' problems, and it, and it does. And I think Jason has attested to that. Now, once you have that union, you wanna to join to that union all the information that's available in those sources so you have that rich profile. 
Uh, Jason mentioned getting to a zero trust model where you're trying to get to a continuous authorization where it's not just simple username and ID that gives you access in an application, but it's all the information you know about that user, the, the departments that are in, the projects they're on, the location they're in, their manager, everything else you can use to make decisions about whether they should be accessing particular resources and particular applications and do a continuous authorization model that requires that rich user profile and the capability of Radiant Logic, as Jason pointed out, to connect to an Oracle database, pull information out of an Oracle database table, and then merge that with an Active Directory record and make it look like a extended LDAP infrastructure so that your applications don't have to understand these attributes are in a database, I gotta do something different with them, and these attributes are in a, a directory and I need to do something different with them, and these attributes are coming from a cloud application over a REST API or SKIM, and I need to do something different with them. And then I have to understand how to figure out the same user across all these applications. Asking your application to do that programmatically is 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 insane. <laughs> your your developers will pull their hair out. They're, they're going to basically these projects will die on the vine. Radiant Logic does that with a mouse click and presents to the application exactly the information that it needs, tailored in the views that you're looking for. As Jason mentioned about exposing views to the outside world, creating views for their cloud applications, I can take my primary information from my global profile and I can set up a Salesforce record that has just the attributes I want to share with Salesforce with the labels on those attributes that Salesforce is expecting. They may call first name F name, they may call last name L name instead of given name and SN. So I can map that data so there's no work on the Salesforce side for integrating my identity data. But now this is a live link. So when someone joins the organization, they qualify for a Salesforce account, they're going to automatically be provided that identity information into Salesforce to create that account in that system because I have this a tailored view that feeds that information and incorporates the identities from my global profile so when something changes in the world, it's reflected in that view automatically. And I can also go back in and, and manage my groups in a way that I can provide authorization based on groups inside my applications, whether I've merged groups from multiple sources, whether I've reformatted my groups and, and renamed uh, them based on different functions and different organizations, or I've created groups dynamically based on attributes. Everybody that works in Chicago, that's managed by Dieter Schuler, that works on large accounts, is in a group that has access to special pricing. Now, if you move to New York, you're gonna be taken out of the Chicago special pricing group because your filter no longer applies. But the challenge with dynamic groups is most applications can't understand how to work with them because it's a filter, not a group membership. So Radiant Logic will actually materialize that group. We will calculate the membership, fill the group as a static group with those members, store that on our HDAP store, and then deliver that at the speed of a directory to the application asking for it. So I'm using attributes to create access control, but I'm doing it with groups that my application understands, even populating the member of attribute. And all this is available in Radiant with mouse clicks and, and wizards. And then the migration and consolidation, when you're ready to move, when the when the, uh, the the requirement is there, and as Jason pointed out, they didn't need see the requirement to consolidate back-end systems until they had an HR, uh, probably an HR upgrade or an HR event where they were consolidating HR platforms, and they really wanted to go ahead and do that last mile, then Radiant Logic is there to help insulate the applications from that change. You can completely reshuffle your identity sources. You can change HR vendors, you can bring in a, a new contracting system, you can add users from other uh, partners or vendors, you can integrate customers into your environment, and all that can happen below the ocean where Radiant Logic on the surface lets the applications get access to all the data, but doesn't confuse them or doesn't add complexity to their work. They just think the world got bigger. They just think there's more people to play with. They don't have to worry about the fact that I've got a whole new different system on the back end that's providing that data. So again, with some slides here to illustrate graphically what we're talking about in some of these scenarios, I've got the idea of building that union. I have to understand that I have the same person with different identifiers, so I have to have ways of identifying or building a common key, a, a, a common identifier or attribute on that user that's beyond their, uh, their common login SAM account name or 
or their name inside a database. So I have tools to allow you to do that to make sure that Lana Landry gets all the accounts that belong to her aggregated to her profile. But I also have to understand that Sarah Matthews and Steve Matthews are different people with the same identifier in that system. So again, I'm digging deeper than just the uh, the SAM account name or the uh, LDAP ID or UID or whatever your ID might be in Azure or in an Oracle database or wherever you're sourcing that data. When that company created those identities, it probably did them uniquely within that company, but now you're merging two pools together. It's like taking two phone books from two different counties and putting them together, if you remember what a phone book is, now you've got a lot of people with the same names that are in different places. So you have to be able to understand and manage that. That again is all mouse driven wizards and tools. And now that I have these sources all created, now that I have all of these different uh, sources of identity data, I wanna be able to merge together that record and add to that union all the attributes from all those systems. I can't have overlapping identities. I can't have two people with the same name in my union. It's not allowed by the rules of, of the way unions are generated. But if I had done that by simply connecting two ADs together or aggregating two backends on a common route, my single sign-on solution would immediately break. Because if I have two J Smiths and I am J Smith and I log in with my ID, single sign-on solution is going to say, I found two J Smiths. I have no idea which one I'm talking to. I stop and the system errors out. So you can't uh get past this idea of building this unified single list of users but it's not just access management and access management is a critical component to this but as jason mentioned too it's the identity governance it's the identity management and, and provisioning within your systems it's everything you do with identity data consumes that identity information and traditionally we've hooked all of our iga platforms our governance provisioning platforms our access management platforms our PAM platform, our uh, SIEM platform, all of those systems have been connected directly back to all the different sources of identity individually. And each of these um, products, whether it's Ping or Savion or SailPoint or um, ForgeRock, they have the capability of connecting to backend systems, but they really would like to go one place to get everything they need in exactly the format they want it. For them to consume identity from multiple different sources, and some can't, Okta can't talk to a database. It looks for an AD directory. That's all it really wants to talk to. So if you've got data in a database you want to put into Okta, without Radiant, you really don't have a way to get it there. So there's limitations. Some applications can only talk to one backend. Some applications can do this work, but it's a heavy lift for them. It's a lot of work to do. And if you've built organizations and infrastructures with this in place, you can see if I merge these two companies together, the, the exponential complexity of trying now to, to weave together these two highly complex, highly convoluted, um, hard-coded connections from multiple platforms together into one world. So what Radiant Logic offers you is the same thing you get with single sign-on. With single sign-on, I go to one place, I offer my credentials and my, uh, my password or my two-factor authentication, Single sign-on validates my identity and then says, here's all the applications you have access to because I trust you and these applications trust me. So you can now authenticate, you can now go into all these apps without having to authenticate again. What we're doing on our side is we're saying, hey, instead of an application, think of a source of identity. Think of a, an Active Directory domain or an untrusted AD forest or multiple forests, Oracle databases, LDAP infrastructure that's been stood up to support different applications, enterprise applications that are storing data, HR platforms. And now think of the cloud, think of Salesforce and ServiceNow and, and Workday and all the places in the cloud that you're putting identity information. We can connect to all those sources of identity and we go through what we call a CAMP model. So if you remember CAMP, C-A-M-P, you'll know everything you need to know about Radiant Logic. We're gonna connect which everybody does, it's pretty straightforward, and pretty standard. Then we're gonna abstract, we're gonna lift that data up into Radiant Logic. We're gonna bring it into Radiant Logic so you can start to work with it and manipulate it in a common format. And then from that, that abstraction, where we're gonna retain the structure and the uh, relationships and the context of that data, because that's important, we're gonna bring that in and let you model that data. And the first model you may make, as Jason did, was a union a big list of all your users, one place for your single sign-on applications to go, your VPNs to go, to be able to authenticate those users and be able to authorize that access. 
But then you may decide to model another view, as Jason spoke about, if I'm now provisioning into a cloud application, I want to create a view of just the folks that should access that application and just the six attributes that, that application needs to see in the format that application wants them in order to fulfill the need to provision into that platform and make that information available. So you model multiple views of the system. Now, Jason mentioned having as many as 80 views. That's not necessarily a challenge because this is something you're building. Once you've set up a view, once you have it in place, Gradient Logic just runs. It's just basically turns the crank and things work. The gears are meshing, your views are filled. If somebody comes on board and things are changed in their profile or they leave the organization, those adjustments are made automatically. This is not a system that needs a lot of daily maintenance and, and manipulation. You kind of build it, run it, watch it, and you're fine. And then we're going to publish those views. We're going to make those views available, whether they're for provisioning to endpoint applications in the cloud, whether they're for accessing from a single sign-on solution, whether they're for running audits against this information, because now you have one place to go to get everything you need, whether we're feeding your governance system so that it has all the information it needs about all the users with a rationalized common identifier and a normalized set of data to do the work it needs to do. We provide that data now in this abstraction layer between the consumers of identity on top and the sources on the bottom. And as Jason mentioned, this disconnection, this abstraction layer, this capability is where the power from Radiant Logic really blossoms. Because now I can move pieces on the bottom as I need to. I can aggregate backends, I can consolidate data, I can change out LDAP directories, I can migrate data into Radiant Logic, and I can change the top end. I can switch out access management platforms, I can bring in new constituencies, and the changes made on either end don't affect the, their component because Radiant Logic provides a view of the world to the uh, particular application that, that it was used to seeing even if that infrastructure no longer exists. Even if you've consolidated down your 80 domains to a single forest now and that infrastructure is flat, I still had an application that required a hierarchical AD infrastructure. Radiant Logic can take that flat model and put it back into that hierarchy and represent it to the application just the way it's used to seeing it. So this capability of, of insulating you from that uh, change, and, and change in our world is inevitable, gives you tremendous power. And that power is very uh, important in an M&A scenario. So if I apply this to a simple model of company A, company B, you'll see again here the amount of work that's been done. And this is not anybody's fault. You didn't do it wrong. This isn't a failing in, in, in terms of you know, the design because every organization that doesn't have Radiant Logic has had this as an alternative. This is the only other way to do it. This is what you grew up understanding. This is the way IT grew up over the last 30 years is I built islands of identity information for particular purposes to serve certain re uses, use cases. And then if I had a different use case and a different purpose, I built another island of identity information and I tried to make that available to the system that needed it in order to consume it for that endpoint. And I end up building all these crisscross scenarios when I try and reuse this information. It becomes very complex and very brittle. And again, if you try and just erase the line in the middle, all you're doing is, is adding chaos to chaos. So what you want to look at when you're doing a merger and acquisition, and we've been asked often about, you know, it's a simple high-level merger and acquisition playbook. First part is cross-identity access. And Jason pointed this out. They were able to do this in weeks. This is weeks. We had the merger of Wachovia and Wells Fargo in the middle of the financial crisis. It was two massive companies when the world was peeling apart. And they were able in four weeks to put those two organizations together doing cross-entity access with Radiant Logic in something that normally would have taken years to do and would have, would have ground the business to a halt. They were able to start operating as one virtual organization immediately, which literally saved Wachovia and saved everyone that had a, a loan with that company because of the, the need to prop up that infrastructure immediately and to be able to work in, as a single organization. And once you've got that cross-entity access, let's talk about data source integration and migration and consolidation. Let's take all the sources of data, your domains, your directories, your databases, and see how we can simplify that back end. We can get down to a smaller number. A lot of mergers and acquisitions, though, we end up you know, with a HR system from each company that was acquired. And if you do a lot of mergers and acquisitions, we've talked to organizations that have six different HR platforms. 
because they never could get everybody to agree to abandon their favorite HR platform and consolidate to one. So you may not be able to consolidate everything, but that's the next piece is take the bottom and simplify that. And then consolidate your applications on top. Consolidate the down to a single, single sign-on platform, a single governance platform. Get applications moving off to the cloud and some set some of your legacy applications. But again, with Radiant Logic, you can do all this in a way that insulates you. So that first step, virtual consolidation, is just standing up Radiant Logic, connecting it to all your sources of identity, connecting it to all of your uh, applications that access that, and creating views in Radiant Logic that present the identity data as you want to present it. It may be a consolidated view, so an application in company B can easily provide access to users in company A and users in company B. It may have an additional layer of access controls at the Radiant level, so that company A users coming into company B have certain requirements, certain groups they're a member of or not a member of that control what access they have in that system. Again, you're not throwing open the doors to everybody. You've built this filtered, controlled management engine in the middle that can let you work virtually as a single organization. And as Jason pointed out, for years, if you want to, you have that capability. Now, if you want to consolidate the back ends as they got the push to do when they started consolidating HR platforms, I can start to decide now, what do I want to keep? What's important? What's the minimum platform backend and sources of identity that I can run on? Because I have the ability now in Radiant to model whole bunches of variations. I don't need to have 80 LDAP directories for 80 different LDAP application infrastructures. I can consolidate that down uh, to a single sort of identity and represent it different ways, 80 different ways inside Radiant Logic if I needed to. So once you've consolidated this back end now, and again, this is not something you have to do day one or something you have to do at all or something you have to do all at once. Radiant Logic can be done incrementally. This is not a scenario where you have to design your solution, build it, roll it out over a weekend, cross your fingers, you guessed right on everything because you basically burned down the house to build the new house. This is a remodel where you still get to cook in the kitchen and use the bathrooms and there's a roof over your head the whole time because we're gonna insulate the experience to the end users and applications from all this change. And then once you've got that consolidation on the back end, you can go ahead and make decisions on what access management platforms do I wanna solidify on? What do I wanna get down to? I want everybody using. What am I, is my single sign-on gonna incorporate? When I'm looking at the cloud, what am I doing to manage that? Am I now on Okta? So I'm now feeding Okta a unified view of identities from all my sources and just the attributes I wanna share in Okta. Whatever that scenario may be, you have now the flexibility of, of consolidating those. And if you decide later, hey, I picked this access management system and this new really shiny bright one came along, I saw at a trade show, and we're gonna to move to the new one now because it sounds really good. That's easy because you have one place to go, one connection to make to get all the identity information that platform needs. And if it needs that platform data in a little bit different way, I simply modified the view with my mouse, and now I have integrated into a whole new single sign-on platform, a whole new vendor, in literally in weeks, as opposed to all the work of trying to plumb that now back to all the major multiple sources and sort out the identity overlap. Now we have another scenario we run into in a merger and acquisition that, that is actually fairly common. Um, and unfortunately for the IT department, management doesn't always tell you this is what they're doing. I'm going to buy this company and we're going to bring it in uh, to our organization and we're going to take all of our expertise and we're going to apply it to this company that's been running inefficiently, hasn't been doing a good job, hasn't been making money, hasn't been modernized and digitized for the, for the new world. And we're going to apply all of our best practices and then when we're done and that company's profitable and it's running on all four cylinders or eight or 12, depending on your sports car. Then we're going to spin it out. We're going to sell it off. We're going to, we're going to take the profit from all of our, our uh, enhancements and make that another organization. So this is only a three-year project. Um, we're not going to necessarily keep this long-term. All these employees won't be here long-term, but they don't tell you. So you take them and you take everybody from that Active Directory and you provision them into your Active Directory, you provision them into your different systems, you integrate them in your HR backend, and you integrate everybody into that system. So that basically you poured them into the same uh, pool and everyone's mixed together. You can't tell who the old and the new were anymore. And you shut down all their, their single sign on and, and their access management and governance platforms because you're using yours, to consolidate and, and deliver on that shared synergy. And then management comes along and says, okay, now we're ready to spin that company out. I want everybody that was with that company and all their platforms and everything 
recreated, generated from scratch, stood up and then cleaved off of the company, the primary company, so we can spin out a full uh, infrastructure. Because you can't sell somebody a company and say, hey, by the way, your IT uh, environment, your identity management infrastructure, it's these five CSV files. That's everything you need to build your world again. You need to give them an operating company because they're expecting to buy something that goes, that still continues to work and to thrive when they're disconnected. So if you know this is coming, if you can point this out or you can make this available as an option to management up front so if they do have that inkling, you can actually stand up Radiant Logic in both organizations, create intercluster replication, create communication at the Radiant Logic level, and we can then virtually do everything we did before in that primary slide where I've merged my organizations together, but I'm not consolidating anything physically. I'm operating as two separate organizations that look like one virtually. So the applications get all the benefits of that. Your business gets all the benefits of synergy or surgery if it has a particular need for an operation. And then when I need to cleave this, when I need to spin that company off, all I do is break the connection. I can go back in and, and make some final adjustments and changes to my views and my model. So for any accommodations I made, I can take those out. But I simply break that connection. And now I have a full standalone company I can spin out and I can do this in a day where alternatively, and we've talked to customers that spent literally a year rebuilding an IT infrastructure for a company that was being spun out and on a really nasty deadline because they had to get it all done by the time the company was released. Um, but that's a tremendous amount of work and effort that has no value necessarily when it can be as simple as this. So in the AD world, we see a lot of conversations about AD consolidation, about merging together multiple AD forests. When Microsoft first started going to Azure, their drive was, let me get to a single domain in uh, my environment, a single forest, so I can then make that available uh, to Azure as a single tenant. That's a challenge in itself. We have uh, customers that have done those mergers and estimated $40 million would have been the overhead and cost for merging the multiple domains and forests that they had in their organization. They were forced to collapse that to one. We can do this virtually for you in, in literally hours. Their, their ROI on using Radiant Logic to do virtual AD domain consolidation was, was phenomenal. Um, and, and what this gives you is the ability to almost immediately start moving to Azure, immediately move to a unified single source of view of information to Okta and up into Salesforce. Whenever you're moving into a cloud environment, the cloud wants one place to go to get the identities just the way you want them. So we can bring this together without necessarily even putting together trust. Because trust themselves may be problematic in a merger where I don't necessarily trust that other company yet. I haven't done all my full um, audit of their internal systems and platforms. I need to be able to manage that. So when I'm consolidating multiple directories, I can simply put them under a common tree with Radiant Logic. I've now got a common root. Um, if I can do subtree searching and I don't have adapting, uh, overlapping identities, really easy for applications to find everybody in a single place. I've virtually correlated these two AD domains together. If I'm doing provisioning into Azure, then Azure AD Connect now can connect to Radiant, see the single root, and find all the users that it needs to push up along with groups in the system. Or if I need to remodel this, if I want to create a new uh, model of my AD environment, it's more of a merged flat list, more of a union, I can do that in, in Radiant Logic at the same time I'm merging these AD directories. Now, I'm not telling the AD directories on the back end to change. They're not doing anything different tomorrow than they're doing yesterday. If you want to maintain those for particular legacy purposes, or whatever other reasons you have, then Radiant Logic can exist as that virtual merger while you have physical separation. Again, if you're spinning something out or you've got applications that require that hierarchy uh, in order to operate, you have that ability and that capability to do that. If you want to sunset them but still create additional views in Radiant Logic that support that legacy hierarchy, I can do that in Radiant from the same information, the same data, same identities, same group data. I can model that as the hierarchy that your application saw a year ago. But I can also take and create a flat view that your new applications are going to use from that same identity data set. So I have, again, tremendous control over what I do with that information. So we're right at the top of the hour now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and open this up for questions that people have submitted into the chat session. We are also sending out a fast track your M&A with Radiant One FID white paper to everyone that's uh, attended today's webinar. Um, that also includes um, the recording of the webinar today and the slides that we reviewed, both Jason's slides and my own. And I, again, 
I highly recommend you take the 15 minutes at the very beginning, or it's actually 10 or 12 of Jason's presentation and go through that again. Listen to the things he talked about. Listen to the benefits he saw immediately. Listen to the impact Radiant Logic had. And if that doesn't convince you to have a follow-up conversation, um, I don't know what to say. Um, on uh, the line of attending today's webinar, I want to thank everyone for taking your time today to do that. Again, we'll get to questions in a second. But I do also want to point out that in two weeks, on February 11th, and yes, we're already into the second month of 2021, it is flying by. Uh, migrate and modernize your legacy directory with federated identity and virtualization. This is really going to dig into how do I take a legacy LDAP application, a Tivoli directory, a, a Forge Rock, a Ping directory, uh, an old CA directory, something even uh, uh, OpenAM or Sun One or ODSEE. How do I take those old directory infrastructures that I've built and modernize that with highly available, highly scalable, highly flexible Radiant Logic? The benefits of virtualization and moving that directory, sunsetting and eliminating that platform, getting off that cost model into much something much simpler, more scalable, more resilient. And that's what we'll talk about in two weeks. So I highly recommend you join us for that conversation. So let me go ahead and open it up for questions here and see what I've got. Uh, let's see. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, we have to refresh the browser. So that was a, that was a comment earlier that came up. Um, first question here goes, uh, sounds great, but we uh, do mergers every few years. So how does this apply to a continuous churn model? And that's, that's quite common. There are organizations out there that their whole industry, their model is, is continuous acquisition, growth by buying out. And especially we've seen tremendous amounts of consolidation in the healthcare industry. If you look at the major uh, healthcare uh, companies now, uh, CHI merged with Dignity, uh, Baylor merged with uh, Scott and White. It, it's a common infrastructure now to consolidate both for um, gaining regional dominance, but the synergies of, of consolidating on some really expensive platforms in the healthcare industry that can be uh, very beneficial to have uh, single sourced from a, from a consolidated company. So we see a lot of that continuous thing where every couple of years I'm buying another hospital organization, I'm buying another healthcare group. So in that scenario with Radiant Logic, you, you benefit in the same way. So you, you put the new merger through the same scenario and, and make that evaluation of, first of all, let's virtually get things together as quickly as possible. As soon as I get that connection to their network, let me get people working together. Let me get visibility there so my security people can start looking inside the acquisition and figuring out what's there. What do they want to keep? What do they want to maintain? Especially in a hospital scenario, you've got physical systems that you have to maintain and, and manage and operate now and incorporate into your existing platform. And then as the next merger comes along, I may not have completely finished all my decisions on one, but I now have to swallow the second one. The flexibility of Radiant Logic doesn't require that you complete all seven, you know, all four steps before you start again. You can be in scenarios where I'm virtually merged with this organization. I'm Consolidated my back ends in this organization, but I'm still sharing multiple front ends. In this one, I've got a console, full consolidation top and bottom. And these can all coexist at the same time. Because of that modeling capability in Radiant, I can show you different views of the data based on the particular use case you have at the moment and let you be able to consume that information in the way you need it. Um, if we do not plan to integrate your acquired companies because they have to operate independently. Again, this is another scenario. Uh, it's kind of a takeoff on the, the DI vestiture or the spin out model where I know ahead of time that I'm going to spin that company out. So I may want to set up that scenario where I stand up Radiant in both organizations and I uh, then get the benefits of all the aggregation and synergies within each organization shared across those uh, those platforms. And I see this now with um, not only mergers and acquisitions, but I see it in very large uh, federal government or um, and systems where I have autonomous departments within the federal government, but they have to be able to work together. They have potentially common identity information from a master source, but they have all their own uh, identity data that's specific to their operations, their department, their functions and they need to be able to merge this data together. We're setting up infrastructures now with Radiant Logic and a master user overarching record model, but also then a set of Radiant Logic or version running locally in a department, locally in a division, locally within an organization, 
um, that is a subset of the master data set, but that has the enhancements that have it run locally. So if I'm running two organizations, maybe I have a, a hospital uh, organization in, in Austin that I want to um, I want to manage and consolidate with and then purchase, and I have my master organization running in Houston, I can run those each as autonomous environments, but with Radiant Logic, I can share the information across those environments that's relevant. I can provide shared services from the Houston master to the satellite in Austin, but I can also let Austin run internally autonomously with its own identity information in Radiant, so I don't uh, hobble that system by uh, creating that. And then I've got another one here um, for storing the LDAP data. Does it use a database or a file system? That's an excellent question. We actually created, and if I'll go back to the, whoops, let's go back to my slide here. There you go. If you look at the, the graphic there, there's a blue sphere. That's everything I've been talking about in terms of camp, connecting, abstracting, modeling, and publishing. Inside that is a golden pyramid. That is our HDAP store. It is our highly available um, big data technology, Lucene and Zookeeper uh, directory infrastructure. It's an LDAP v3 compliant directory, but it's a ex completely extensible schema. We're platform agnostic and, and, and standards based, so we'll talk to anybody. We'll incorporate data from anywhere, and we store that data locally in Radiant Logic. The wonderful thing about that HDAP store is we can have multiple HDAP stores running autonomously within one deployment of Radiant Logic. So one three server cluster for high availability will appear to the outside world to be one entity of Radiant Logic. But in that, I can have multiple independent HDAP stores, data that's stored on disk in Radiant that is appears as a separate um, entity. And then I can create virtually a merger of those separate HDAP stores or those HDAP stores and other sources to create a view that appears to be another set of information in another format. So you don't have to stand up any additional databases when you deploy Radiant Logic. It's a single install. We spin up everything we, you need. We build the HDAP stores for you. And again, this is a mouse click. If I want to create another store in Radiant Logic, I simply go in and right click and uh, create new object. And then I decide it's an HDAP store. And now I can populate that with a provisioning application. I can synchronize in uh, an LDAP, uh, LDIF file from another directory. I can uh, I can make that information available to any kind of front end portal to populate. So you have complete access to that data. Uh, can we download the test for a POC? Yes, definitely. Get in contact with your salesperson um, and we'll definitely work with you on getting a POC together. We love to sit down and outline the use cases you're looking at to make sure that what you're trying to do is something we can do. I will tell you if we can't, there's some things we can't do like pretend to be a domain controller. But we will um, we'll work with you on that, outline that, and then make sure that you're successful, including uh, providing you access to the uh, software and at no cost assistance during that POC to make all of that work. Um, our idea is to eliminate various directories, ODSCE, OUD, and combine them into a single directory, AD it may be. I see Radiant can be helpful in this use case. A bit more information around this use case and samples would be helpful. Yes, we'll talk about that next in two weeks for sure, but I'll touch on it right now. What we would suggest if you're going to sunset ODSCE and OUD, those are LDAP applications. The applications that are calling on those uh, for access information, maybe looking for an LDAP v3 compliant structure, uh, is member of instead of member of. Microsoft's AD does things a little differently. Its schema is, is a little bit more uh, challenging to extend. You may not want to extend your schema in AD. You may want to. It may be fine, but you may end up with a mess. So what we recommend is replace the old legacy LDAP directories, OUD, ODSCE, and others with Radiant. If you want to source the identity from AD, we can take the AD as the source of truth for identity information and model it in Radiant in the LDAP format that those applications still are expecting and need to see. And then Radiant can be the store for any data that was in those LDAP environments that doesn't exist someplace else in your organization. So you have a lot of options there, but Radiant can actually be that end repository. That'll give you much more flexibility than AD, especially if you're going to use that source of identity for things like provisioning into the cloud or setting up to a VPN or connecting up to, potentially even now we're starting to talk to more and more customers that are managing uh, physical endpoints like routers and firewalls that need an LDAP backend and consume that from Radiant Logic. So definitely some options there. Um, one last question I'll touch on here and then we'll wrap you up. I know I've taken you over. I appreciate everybody hanging on. Is do you deploy on Windows or Linux? 
We deploy on either Windows or Linux, 64-bit operating system. We're a Java application. You don't need to know Java to use the product. Again, it's all wizard and, and driven uh, and mouse driven. There's command line tools for everything also, uh, but it'll deploy on a 32-bit Linux, the major flavors that everybody recognizes, and 60, excuse me, 64-bit. 64-bit Windows on, on the major 2012, 16, 19. Um, and you have the ability to deploy it if you need to in a uh, Docker model uh, managed by Kubernetes, or you can deploy it up in AWS instances, you can deploy it in Azure instances, you can run it in Google Cloud, so it can be deployed in a number of locations. And again, it's a, a consolidated management uh, model uh, driven by wizards and tools that you can uh, operate from anywhere. So that wraps us up for today. I do appreciate everyone hanging on that did for us that went over and it looks like most everyone did. And I encourage you to join us in two weeks. If you have any additional questions, reach out to your Radiologic salesperson. If you don't know who that is, check us out on uh, radiologic.com and you'll find uh, communication information there. We'll definitely get you connected to the right person and we can deepen this conversation with you. And I wish you all a healthy rest of the, uh, the day and the year and hopefully, uh, We'll be seeing each other face-to-face -face at conferences before Christmas. Thank you very much. And thank you, Jason, for your, all of your input today and your excellent presentation. We appreciate it very much. You're welcome. Thank you.